All right, get a neurosurgeon up here right away. Is that her? Uh, yes, wait right here. That woman came in the ambulance with a girl. Are you a friend? Kind of. Yeah, well, listen, we need to get her name, and if she has any relatives... I only know her, her first name, Christine. Christine. I, I don't know anything about her family or friends. Okay, can you tell us what happened? She'll be all right, won't she? Well, we're doing everything that we can, but if you could tell us how she was injured, that would be a great help to us. She was so sweet. She gave my little girl some warm clothes. Yes, me too. I, she... But you need to tell me how she was hurt, okay? Uh, this other woman was so angry about Christine being there, and, and then when she saw Christine taking pictures, that's when she attacked her. A woman attacked her? Yes, she she took the camera away and hit her on the head. We, we should have tried to do something to stop her, but it happened so quick and we were so afraid. All right, so she was hit on the head with the camera? Yes, uh, and then she fell against the fence. I think she hit her head when she fell. Okay, sounds good. Um, now, do you live on the waterfront, or...? Yes. Does Christine live with you? No, my little girl and I don't have a home. Christine said she might be able to help us, but that awful woman wouldn't let her. So many doctors and nurses. She's hurt real bad, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Now, if you could continue telling me she was taking pictures there well, and... Well, the newspaper has a banner, and that woman stole her camera. She just ran off with it. I don't know how anyone could be that vicious. Do you know the name of that woman? No. I never saw her before today. She, she just showed up and started acting like she ran the waterfront or something. Well, the par that poor girl, the paramedics said that, that no one even talked to the police about this. They, they were too frightened. They don't want to get involved. Although two of the men did run after her, but she, she disappeared. All right, ma'am, now, Patricia. You, okay, uh, Patricia, do you think that you would recognize her if you saw her again or be able to describe her? Yes. You need to go and talk to the police about this because if you don't, she's gonna get away and somebody else could get hurt. Do you understand? All right, I'll, I'll help them. Thank you, that's good. Why don't you get, Patricia, you want some coffee or get her a cup of coffee? Listen, she is on the staff at the Banner, so I'm gonna call and run an ID on her, okay? Okay, tell radiology we're coming over for a cat right, Let's scan. go, let's move her before we lose. No. What is buried up on Lantana Mountain that is so <clears throat> precious to you? When you find it, I will tell you the whole story. I want you to take your trusty picks and shovels up there and start to dig right away, right here. As soon as you need heavy equipment, I'll have it delivered. All right, but you have to tell me what I'm looking for. A tunnel or some kind of an entrance into the mountain. A mine shaft? An entrance, period. As soon as you find one, you report to me. And if you find any artifacts, especially a pin or an epaulet that looks something like this, you let me know right away. That's a fairly modern design. An epaulette suggests a military uniform. No questions. Now, don't uh, get sidetracked either by any uh, Indian relics you happen to discover. The tunnel is our main objective, and the sooner you find that, the larger your bonus will be. All right, if I find the entrance and the artifacts, does that mean we do not have to involve Christine any further? I can't promise that, Leo. I don't want your daughter hurt any more than you do. But if that becomes unavoidable, I can promise that I will do everything in my power to make it up to her. A wise and prudent man prepares for every eventuality. But no amount of instinct or intellect could have possibly foretold the fate that befell my precious Victoria. I can rest with certainty that the explosion will seal forever the secrets in Lantano Mountain. I can only hope and pray that my daughter was able to live a long and happy life, free from the demon that threatened to destroy her happiness, and free from the secrets which the mountain holds. How did you do with Bob Buchanan? We had a pleasant lunch, but I'm not sure I accomplished my goal. You had better change your status from stranger to friend and do it soon. It's quite clear from Victor's remarks that Nikki Smith knows where the entrance to the tunnel of Lantana Mountain is. Has Leo begun his excavation yet? He's probably got more of a chance of finding Ben Franklin's love letters. Oh, come on, Michael. The man's a competent archaeologist. Even the most brilliant archaeologist would need more information than I was able to give Leo. But perhaps you should confide in him. 
He might give you some ideas about where to start the search. Oh, too big of a risk. He's already in a tailspin over the fact that he might lose his daughter. I'm going to have to rely on his archaeological instincts for the moment. And you might have to dig up the whole blessed mountain, too. If I have to, I will. And if that doesn't work, I will force Nicky Smith to reemerge. I'm going to find this tunnel one way or the other, Frazier. I'm sorry to pull you away from your meeting, but this is an emergency. Oh, what's the matter? Christine is missing. What? I have looked everywhere for her. She has disappeared, and it's all your fault. I knew it would be a disaster if you told her. Leo, will you calm down? She's not missing. She hasn't disappeared. And I did not tell her that I am her mother. Last time I saw Christine, she was headed down to the waterfront to take pictures of homeless people for the banner. Does that mean you've changed your mind about telling her the truth? No, I have not changed my mind at all. But she's very excited about this photo assignment right now, and she can't focus on anything else. As soon as she's calmed down, I'm going to sit her down, and I'm going to tell her everything. Are you just going to blurt it out? Of course I'm not going to blurt it out. I shall be very gentle with her. I'll prepare her as best as I can. Are you going to tell her about Nikki Smith? She deserves to know the whole truth. I expect it'll be something of a shock for her, heaven knows it was for me. But I think I can make her understand that it was never intended to harm her in any way. Once we realized that Nikki was pregnant, our love for each other deepened, and we devoted all our energies to preparing for the birth of our child. What little money we had, we spent on rent and on food, but all the tips that Nikki made, we put in a special savings account to buy things for the baby. You know, Miss Parsons, the social worker from New York, told me that Nikki was very upset when she learned she was going to have a baby. Oh, we were both shocked. It wasn't anything that we'd planned on. I was still in school. It turned our lives upside down. And once you recovered from the shock, were you excited about the baby and the future? Oh, God knows I was excited. And Nikki? Look, you have previously given me the impression that Nikki was very happy about the baby. Now I get the feeling that she didn't share your joy at all. Oh, oh, she did, to an extent. But she seemed always to be wrestling with some terrible fear. Well, she denied it, but I knew it was there just underneath the surface. Fear of what? She seemed frightened that something was going to happen to her. She was always making me promise that I would love and care for our child, that, that he or she would know how much Nikki loved her, how much she wanted her to be happy. I think she had a premonition that she was going to die in childbirth. She did. Well, when I met you again, when I read your article about Nikki Smith, that's when I finally understood. I only wish I'd known then. Perhaps I could have been some help to you. God, poor Nikki. She cared that much. She felt such pain. She couldn't have been all bad, could she? The article you wrote about her, that wasn't the Nikki Smith that I knew and loved. She was a totally different person. I'm sorry I don't mean to cause you any further pain. Leo. Will you tell me more about Nikki Smith, please? It's very important to me. All right. Congratulations, Cena. Good news travels fast. Hey, Wanda. Oh, you heard about me and Cord. I sure did. And Asa, I wish you and Renee a long and happy life together. You, you could make me a very happy man, Max, by getting the hell out of my house. You haven't heard my offer. Uh, Asa, I think Wanda and I will go talk to Renee about the menu. Uh, come on, Wanda. Yeah, excuse us, Asa. Sure. Two minutes. I wouldn't give you two seconds. Asa, come on. You're not going to let your anger at me over that WVLE incident going to impair your judgment and your good business sense, are you? It was not an incident. It was a robbery. You took advantage of me. I played by your rules. I just happened to win. You won because a wacko named Patrick London was drugging me. You took advantage of my weakened state, stole a TV station right out from under me. You're right. You're absolutely right. I did take unfair advantage of you, and that's why I'm willing to let you back in the game at a very reasonable price. You got something I need. Cash. And I got something you want. WVLE. 
Why don't we try to work out a partnership? Why? Ace, friendships are very important to me. And now that Tina's back with Cord and back in the Buchanan fold, so to speak, uh, no reason we can't bury the hatchet and work together now, is there? Max, you have the nerve of a coyote sneaking into a chicken coop. That's what it takes to make millionaires, isn't it? No, Max. It takes talent, intelligent and hard work. That's what it takes to make millionaires. Three things you'll never have. Because you'll always be a loser. And everybody knows you're one step from total disaster. That's why you're here to try and get me to bail you out. 